Well, here we are, post-WrestleMania Raw. Let's talk about WrestleMania 38. Um, preview, a little bit of prediction, you know, just a lot of, just a lot of things are, are going on right now that I want to kind of discuss here as, you know, WrestleMania week is this week, um, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be pretty busy, so, you know, there's going to be a lot, a lot there's, there's just going to be a lot of things going on, you know, this week, there's a lot of wrestling shows going on this week, you know, lots of big major shows going on, um, you know, NXT Stand to Deliver is like before the first night of WrestleMania 38, so, you know, it's, it's like several hours before, it's like at noon here in the DFW area, you know, in Arlington, um, at AT&T Stadium, so. Uh, we again, there, there's a lot of stuff going on, you know, for this WrestleMania 38. Now, a lot of people aren't hyped for this card. I am in that mixed, you know, bag type of reaction to, to where I think, you know, some of this card is kind of mid, kind of mid, but you know, some of this card at the same time. Oh, there's gonna be some bankers up in here, you know. Um, as we all know, you know, well, why don't we start, you know, with night one. Night one here is a interesting night one now. The order of these matches, you know, who knows what the order of these matches are going to be. And we'll talk about one more thing here that's going to be on night one. So, you know, uh, first things first, the Raw Women's Championship, Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair. We all know what happened back at SummerSlam in which, you know, 26 seconds yeah and I, I've been kind of dismissive about the whole Becky Lynch being back kind of thing it's 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 different from it's different from Roman Reigns you know in a big big way because I just I just simply do not care about Becky Lynch anymore <laughs> being a champion you know so you know and the way you know Bianca Belair has been built up you know I mean it, she, she's a bona fide superstar at this point, a, a damn good superstar. You know, personally, in my honest opinion, she she should be able to have the t she should have the title right now. But I mean, we all know that this isn't how the WWE operates. So she she should have at least either the Raw or the SmackDown Women's Championship right now. But you know, if it push comes to shove, and you know. She wins it at WrestleMania. Uh, I'm I'm fine with that. You know, I, I've wanted a long, long reign for this young lady for quite some time now. Well, so you know, I hope we get another long reign that actually means something because you know, I I, I want it. I need, we need we need this. We need a black women's champion that can actually you know make things interesting around here because well, again we. We know what the problem with the women's division has been. It's not very interesting, you know. The, the, there's been some times where it's interesting, but at other times, not so much. So this is this is the type of match, you know. I think that can do some, this can do some damage. You know, this can do some damage. Uh, but then, you know, next up, uh, the Mysterios, Ray and Dominic going up against the Miz and Logan Paul now. I don't know why, you know, Logan Paul is in this match, but hey, if Logan Paul can still, you know, Rey Mysterio's mask, he can do whatever he wants, man. Because I mean, I, I don't think I don't think we should be wasting time on Logan Paul being in the WWE. But I mean, he, he's had appearances in the WWE before. I think it I think it was last WrestleMania too that he was, you know present but I, I, I'm kind of lukewarm on this one you know no reason for this match to really even exist it's just there to get some star power in you know and same thing with this next matchup Drew McIntyre versus Happy Corbin with Madcap Moss uh, again this is another matchup that I don't think should be on this card but yet here we are with this match even though you know, like I don't, I don't know what in the world happened with Drew McIntyre. Like I thought, you know, maybe he'd be back in the main event by now, but he's not. 
you know, like like now is the time to be putting him back in the main event, but that's not happening, and I'll tell you why, and we all know why, if, you know, once we get to night two, once I get to start talking about night two, but man, the fall off for McIntyre has been, you know, just absolutely saddening, you know, three straight matchups with Bobby Lashley, and now he's stuck in this feud with with the man formerly known as Baron Corbin, now Happy Corbin, who is a damn good worker, by the way. I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. This is going to be an underrated type match on this card because both these guys can they, both these guys can do some damage, you know. Um, but I, I just think this is kind of a throwaway feud that's lasted a bit too long because it's it's been it's been here for a while. So you know, it is what it is, man. And then you got the. SmackDown Tag Team Championship in which the Usos, who honestly, they really shouldn't even have titles, but again, we all know the WWE's Tag Team Division is not very good, you know, because like, the Viking Raiders were supposed to face off against the big at day one, and that never happened, so now Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs, who has come up recently, you know, that that matchup is a thing, and it's like, okay, why? All right, I, I guess. And then there's another tag team match on this card as well. You know, the New Day, King Woods, Kofi Kingston. Remember, no Big E because Big E um, injured his neck a couple weeks back, unfortunately, and he broke it, which is kind of disappointing. You know, because I mean, uh, another another big name that should be on this card, but unfortunately, he got injured. You know, you know. So, you know, Sheamus, Rich Holland, and I forgot who this was. Who was? Oh yeah, this is Pete Dunne. But now they're calling him Butch. Yeah, that that's that's not a good. Uh, that that's not that's not even a good name. There's been some name changes with the, within the WWE over the past few months that have not been good. This is another one of those examples. Like I know they changed Walter to Gunther, and now they changed Pete Dunne to Butch. Like what what is this? This is another match here that I just don't I just don't see the value in this, you know. Again, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about you know why you know why I think everything is the way it is in a minute here, but personally I just don't think this match should even be on this card because I mean this this has this has nothing of substance here, you know, because there's there's there should be some other matches on this card but they're not on the card, um, at least not yet. By the time you see this, you know, anyway. And then, of course, you know, you got Seth freaking Rollins, one of the best workers in the WWE, taking on presumably, it's presumably going to be Cody. Yeah. Y'all remember Cody, you know, a.k.a. Cody Rhodes? Yeah. Man who was, you know, one of the big guys for AEW during AEW's first couple years. And, um... Yeah, he's, he's more than likely coming back. Now, whoever is going to be, you know, it, it, it's, go, it's going, it's going, it's going, we we all know by this point it might be Cody Rhodes. Now, if it's not Cody Rhodes, it's somebody else. I don't even know who that could be, you know, but it's likely going to be Cody Rhodes. And Mr. Man will announce Seth Rollins' opponent on night one. So, on night one, we'll get to see more than likely it'll be Cody Rhodes, but I mean, I don't know who else, who else could possibly be Rollins Bullets, because I mean, there's, there's just, it, it's, it's been rumored that it's been Cody Rhodes for quite some time now, so, we'll see. And then the main event, apparently, which is, again, this is another one that doesn't make any sense, Ronda Rousey came back at the Royal Rumble, which, again, I was just absolutely disappointed in, and this match is just not... This isn't for me, man. Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. This is not for me, man. This is not for me. This is not. This is not the type of matchup I want to see for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Just, I'm just saying. It, it's just. I just don't like this. You know, Ronda Rousey has been irrelevant, completely irrelevant for three years, and then all of a sudden, she comes back. Wins the Royal Rumble, gets this match against Charlotte, and we y'all don't mind y'all know you know whoever views these videos because I I don't make these every month and everything like that you know this isn't like a every 
two or three months, you know, when it comes to the WWE. I am not a Charlotte fan. I am not. I think she's a great wrestler. I just don't like her in the spotlight, you know, like this. And this match is just absolutely boring to me. Like, I, I do not care about this match at all. So, like, night one, night one, there's a couple good matches on here, you know, at least, you know, at least three or four good matches. But, I mean, the buildup has been good. And then, you know, certain things have happened. To where it's like, I don't know, man. I, I, I genuinely don't know why. Why is this a thing? And then, you know, you got Kevin Owens potentially, you know, you know, or not potentially. It will be happening. Steve Stone Cold Steve Austin will be coming back to the WWE to have a little chat with Kevin Owens, you know. So that that's going to be a thing that's going to happen. So um, I, I don't know how. I don't, I don't know how it, it's, it's going to recur. You know, it's going to occur this this um, this edition of the KO show, the Kevin Owens show. You know, because apparently Kevin Owens has been disrespecting Texas, which I mean, I don't really care because Texas disrespects itself on a daily basis. I mean, I live in Texas, <laughs> so it is what it is, man. Um, so whatever whatever this segment can entail. I, I, I honestly don't care. I honestly do not care at all. And then night two, night two. Oh boy, oh boy. This this might be a little bit hard to talk about because there's, there's again there's some good ones on here. There's some really good matches on here. Um, you got a fatal four way tag team match for the women's tag team championship in which Clean Zelina and Carmella, who are the champions right now, Sasha Banks and Naomi, and then you got Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan. And then Natalia and Shayna Baszler on that last team. Um, again, the Women's Tag Team Championship is also a championship that just kind of doesn't really fit in anything anymore. Because I mean, it just does. It there's literally no build up for this at all. Like they have to. Like I, I swear this was supposed to be just Zelina and Carmella versus Sasha Banks and Naomi, and then you know everybody has been added to this whole thing, and it's just like why, why, why. Why is this a thing? Like we have all these damn good women's wrestlers, and they're in this tag team match for a tag team championship that really means absolutely nothing. Because I mean, the women's tag team championship is a farce, in my opinion, and it, it has no substance at all. And you, you got all these talented wrestlers who should be, should be competing for you know the top titles, you know, so we don't have to see things, you know, like these two matchups on night one but no that's not the case here not the case at all I don't get it I really I really don't it, it could be a sneaky underrated match though but I, I don't I genuinely don't know and then you got Johnny Knoxville who appeared at the Royal Rumble for some reason taking on Sami Zayn Sami Zayn's been on this you know conspiracy theory type thing for quite some time now and you know, I, I I I could I could care less about this match. I could care less, man. I could care less. I really could. Cause I mean, this this is just kind of sad at this point. Like, like man, Sammy he should have more to do with this. Like, and originally, remember, and if you've been watching, you know, SmackDown and stuff like that for the past couple weeks, I have not been. But if you have been, you know, keeping up with things. You know, like I have been, I've been keeping up, but I haven't been actually watching. Sami Zayn lost the Intercontinental Championship. We'll talk about the Intercontinental Championship and the United States Championship in a moment. But you know, originally this was this might have been for the Intercontinental Championship. In all honesty, you know, Johnny Knoxville versus Sami Zayn. That that's this could have been for the Intercontinental Championship because Zayn had the Intercontinental Championship. Thank God it's not, because I, I genuinely don't know the hype behind this match. This matchup shouldn't even exist. But whatever, man. Whatever. And then the what what's right now is the third matchup on this card. Now again, things can change at any moment. Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory. Now this matchup right here, this one's gonna be good. Let me tell you, Pat McAfee has had both Brock Lesnar and Vince McMahon on his show over the past month or so and 
we all know Vince McMahon is very high on Austin Theory. He's been pretty high on Theory for quite some time, you know, because the whole, you know, the whole Theory McMahon type angle that's been going on that that has been great, you know, because I, I think I think dude's a genuinely good wrestler. I mean, dude <laughs> took dude took a uh, dude took a bump, you know, from like the top of the Elimination Chamber. Like, absolutely got wrecked by Brock Lesnar in the Elimination Chamber. And, I mean, I'm sitting here like, man, man. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here completely shocked, man. So, we we, we know Austin Theory could work. You know, Pat McAfee could work, too, because this man was working some NXT matches, you know, back in, what, 2019, 2020? It was either 2019, 2020, or 2021. I can't remember but when, you know, exactly. I have to look that up again, cause I forgot. But we know Pat McAfee can do some work, you know. You know that that feud with Adam Cole that lasted for quite some time. That was a good feud there. Good feud. You know, I don't pay attention to NXT at all. You know, but I mean, honestly, you know, NXT got, NXT stand to deliver got a better card than WrestleMania 38. In all honesty. Um, but you know, this McAfee theory match is going to be real interesting. You know, really the first matchup that matters on this on this card for the second night, you know, so uh, it's it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be real fun. Uh, then you got RK Bro, Randy Orton and Riddle, and originally, I, originally like people were saying, you know, media outlets and stuff like that was saying that Orton and Riddle were gonna split up and have a match at WrestleMania, which I think that would have been nice. But instead, you know, you got the Street Profits and Alpha Academy um, going up against RK Bro in a triple threat tag team match for the Raw Tag Team Championship. Again, this doesn't really matter because I mean, th th this is it's probably going to be something decent. I think it'll be a decent match. But I mean, again, I just don't really care at this point. This is this is not this is not for me, man. Not not a good way to you know get this. Type of match on the card. I mean, we we are the tag team The tag team titles are just so irrelevant. Like, why aren't these being unified at this point? Because I mean, I just do not care, man. I do not care. Um, but Edge, AJ Styles. Oh boy. Oh boy. You you're, you're telling me the rated R superstar going up against the phenomenal one in a dream type match? Like, I don't think I ever expected this in a million years. And yet here we are. Like Edge has turned heel. He's 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 going crazy out here. Like man, you know this match is going to deliver. You know this is you know this is going to be the best match of both nights. In all honesty, this is, at least in my opinion, this is this is going to be the best match of the night. In my opinion, of both nights, I, I think it's really going to be that damn good. We know Edge can still throw it down in the ring. We know AJ Styles is phenomenal. That's why he's called the phenomenal one. Like, this is going to be one hell of a match, let me tell you. Something that got added tonight, um, Bobby Lashley versus the big man almost. Don't care. Do not care. Bobby Lashley was injured. That's why he lost. You know, he didn't he did technically lose the WWE Championship, you know, at, at, um, at Elimination Chamber. But, um, you know, his title got taken away from him. Why is he challenging for it, man? Like this, this match up here, like it makes zero sense. It literally just got added tonight during Raw, and I, I'm just sitting here like I don't care. I like, like almost lost all relevance when he when he's when he you know split up from AJ Styles. Like he's lost all relevance. And apparently, dude is not a good worker. At least some people have said that he's not a good in-ring worker. So I don't, I don't know. I, I could be completely wrong on that. But I mean, I was initially impressed, you know. So uh, we'll see, we'll see. Because I mean, I, I personally don't think this match should be even be on here. But whatever, man. And then of course, the main event of both nights. The main event that you know we've seen this before. But I don't think we've seen it like this. Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns with Paul Heyman in a winner-takes-all match for both the WWE Championship and the WWE Universal Championship. The titles will be unified 
there's a, just apparently a new title design ready to go. And, you know, the journey for Roman Reigns is simple. He's continuing to be Roman Reigns. I mean, one of the best heels I think I've seen in quite some time. You know, like, dude just has a charisma for it. And that's why he's held Universal Championship for damn near two years. Personally, personally, Reigns should lose at WrestleMania 38, in my opinion, this is when this is when I want him to lose. But I don't know how this is going to go. In all honesty, I don't know how this is going to go. This could go two different ways, and there are two strokes for two folks because Brock Lesnar has been on a tear himself over the past few months. Like day one, he gets added to you know the championship match, the WWE Championship match. Which was supposed to be like what a four way at some point, but now it was a five way, five way match. And however, however, Roman Reigns couldn't go. This match was supposed to be at day one, remember? This match was supposed to be at day one, and it's now here at WrestleMania 38. So Brock Lesnar ends up winning the WWE Championship, comes back in Elimination Chamber, does the insane. Things that he does in the limitation chamber, like like he broke through the plexiglass, you know, um, cage structure, like the little pod in the elimination chamber, just proceeded to destroy everybody after Bobby Lashley was already, you know, out of the match because of his shoulder and whatnot. And boom, there you have it. And now Brock is bracing his softer side, I guess, you know. Because, I mean, dude has just been looking like he's having fun out there. Like, he's got a cowboy hat on and stuff like that. Like, again, you know about the whole Brock hairstyle and everything. The new Brock Lesnar hairstyle. And, I mean, Mance has just been... Mance has just been having fun out there. Like, this is, like, the most fun I think he's had in quite some time. You know. Because, I mean, he, 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 again, he's just... He's just He's just living it up out there. Again, that that Pat McAfee show interview was just absolutely great. A really fun watch. And, you know, the fact that, that we have this winner-take-all match, I, I genuinely don't see the point in doing this again because we've had unified WWE championships in the past and it ended up not working out. For whatever reason, and that's why we have to split the titles. Like, we've had, we've had to do this multiple times, and you know, for whatever reason, it just doesn't work out. And speaking of titles, why don't we talk about the Intercontinental and the United States Championship here? You know, you got Ricochet, who is you know now you know supposedly the number two baby face. You know, not defending his title at WrestleMania, it'll be on SmackDown. You got Finn Balor. And Damian Priest in a feud, and yet Balor's in a match on SmackDown 2. I don't know if that Balor Damian Priest matchup will be added to the card. I don't know. Like people were saying, like, you know, there could be like a ladder match for Ricochet at WrestleMania, but I mean it would be infinitely better. Both both of these both of these kinds of matchups for the Intercontinental and the United States titles would be infinitely better. Some of these matches on this card right now, and I don't think there's any other rumored matches. I think I think the cards are pretty much set. So you know, hopefully you know the Intercontinental title should be added to this card because the Intercontinental title hasn't been defended at a WWE premium event, a pay per view in a year. It has been a year. Last WrestleMania, WrestleMania 37 was the last time the Intercontinental Championship was defended on pay-per-view. Why? Why is the Intercontinental Championship not on pay-per-view, man? This doesn't make any sense. Why is the United States Championship not on pay-per-view? This doesn't make any sense either. Like, the United States Championship matches have been pretty good on pay-per-view recently. Why is it not being defended here? Like you got the you got the tag team titles, all three tag team titles, which nobody gives a damn about. Like I, I do not really I do not really care about the women's tag title or the SmackDown tag titles. Now the Raw tag team titles is a little bit different because, you know, the whole Orton and Riddle thing, you know, has been 
solid. It's been solid. What do you mean, these, those other two titles? You get rid of those. Like, you know, honestly, let me tell you. WrestleMania should be a one-night event. Like, we don't, we don't need to go five, six hours again. You know, just make a nice, cohesive eight to ten match card. Get it out, you know. Get it out of here, you know. Get 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 it done in four hours, three to four hours, and you'll be set. Like this, this doesn't take this doesn't this doesn't take much effort. It it really doesn't. But this has just been sad, sad, sad decisions, you know, lately. And again, like NXT standard Olympus car looks a lot better by comparison. Like again, you know, there are so many matches that you could get rid of for both night one and night two. Like again, I don't think the SmackDown tag team title should be on this card. I don't think the McIntyre Corbin match should be on this card, although I think it'll be a good match. I don't think Logan Paul should be anywhere near this card. You know, I don't think the New Day should be taking on Sheamus or anything like that, and, and Butch and Ridge Holland. I don't think that matchup should be happening. I don't think the women's tag team title should be happening. There's no way Johnny Knoxville, Sami Zayn should be happening. Uh, you know, Bobby Lashley and almost. That's not even a good match right there. It's so like, you know, I got, I got, we're, so uh, let's say I cut six of those matches. You still got eight matches left, and you still got a damn good eight match card. Because I mean, I mean. The card, you know, without some of these matches, looks solid. Like, the, the, there's some solid matchups here, but it's just, you know, disorganized by all of this glut that should be here. And again, WrestleMania should be just one night only in the future. I don't. It, it's inter it, not only is it interfering with, with other stuff that I gotta do, because there's some other things, you know, that I like to watch. Instead of, you know, two nights WrestleMania. Don't get me wrong. That's a lot of wrestling. That's like six hours of wrestling. We don't need six hours of wrestling, you know, on, you know, pay-per-view. We, we don't need that. Like, three to four hours maximum, that's good enough for me. Like, I, I can deal with a three to four hour pay-per-view. Can't deal, you know, with, with a six hour pay-per-view. No, no matter how you slice and dice it, you can slice it and dice it two different ways. And I believe there's like a two hour pre-show both days too, so it just doesn't make any sense at this point. It really doesn't. It really doesn't, man. So, it, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter, you know. So, I, I don't know. I don't know, guys. I really don't know. But what I will say is that I'm still excited regardless for WrestleMania 38. I hope we have a good time at WrestleMania 38. And when I come back to you, it'll be SummerSlam time. Not Money in the Bank. I'm not doing that because they yeah, Money in the Bank is being counted as a major pay-per-view now for some reason. But that's 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 not it. Not it at all. So I'm going to come back around SummerSlam time, which will be like in late July. You know, so cannot wait for all that, and I'll see you all in late July for talking about SummerSlam. We'll be talking about you know everything from WrestleMania 38 all the way up to SummerSlam and everything like that. So yeah, I'll, I'll see you all then. Take care, have a good night, and have a good day where whatever you're watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.